Welcome to Wine Country at Work. I'm Ralph Demetrius, your tour guide. Right now we're in September and we're in the middle of crush. So there are grape trucks all over the place and juice trucks, these big tractor trailers. There's the pickers are every place and the vineyard managers and winemakers are all rushing around. And we also get the largest number of visitors, of tourists coming at this time because they want to be here when everything is happening. So it's a very busy time. For people like me in the tour business, we're on the road all the time with clients. And it's very exciting and it's also a little exhausting, but it's a wonderful time to be here. At the same time, I also want to get our show done, Wine Country at Work. We really enjoy doing this and I didn't want to forget about our audience. So I had been doing a show along the way in which I'd been picking out wineries that I think are really special locations. See, that's what I love about wineries. I love their locations. I love the buildings. I love the environment that makes them special. And so I picked out my favorite wineries and I put them together in a little collage, kind of vignette. And what we also narrate a little bit about them to give you an idea of what makes them special. So for our edition of Wine Country at Work this, this month, some of our most unique wineries. First-time visitors to Napa and Sonoma are often surprised by how successful this area is as a tourist destination. Millions of people come here yearly, and 60% of first-time visitors return for more of the wine country experience. Some of that is convenience. Many of the wineries are about an hour from San Francisco, a big destination on its own. Some of that's fame. This area produces wines that rank with the best in the world, and there are lots of thirsty people out there. But some of the attraction is the unique nature of the wineries themselves. When you travel in the, in the traditional wine areas of Europe, each tends to have a homogenous style. The areas are often historic, so even new construction has to follow guidelines to fit in with the look of the place. There are ultra-modern wineries, but they often hide them in caves under the ground. Among California winemakers, no such guidelines exist. And of course, California has a long reputation for individuality and innovation. Those qualities are well represented here. One design challenge that everybody has to deal with is that wineries and vineyards, which ideally should be near each other, require very different conditions. Grapevines need plenty of sun and heat to make sugar to turn into alcohol. But wines need to be kept cool and dark for a long period of time to age properly. That's why sometimes you'll drive to a winery passing some soaked vines on all sides and when you get there all you see is a doorway stuck in the side of a hill. The entire winery facility is inside of a nice cool dark man-made cave. Winemakers know that the unique style of their winery buildings can be an attraction that brings customers in the door. Some owners give their architects a theme and let them fly. Others have built on the traditions that preceded them. Still others have thrown themselves heart and soul into their buildings, making the winery experience as intimate and delightful as a personal visit with the owner. The views always impress. Many of the wineries in Los Carneros are understated. Bouchain, Etude, Acacia are all pleasant to look at, but they don't make a statement. Artessa sits on the top of a hill with their vines below. The vineyards are the foundation of their work. The winery high above is where they create the highest expression of their grapes, their wine. 
The Artessa experience makes a big impression, even though the building design is minimalist. Then you climb the stairs and approach the winery on a broad walkway with pools of water on both sides and views that stretch all the way to San Francisco. As you walk towards the door, the hollow sound of your steps tells you that their barrel caves are under your feet. As you enter the winery, you see that it's built around an enclosed courtyard that calls back to the owner's Spanish heritage. This building tradition evolved to keep the heat of the day at bay while ensuring the security of the family. It takes a huge amount of work to make something complex appear simple. And Artessa is that simple elegance that reflects rather than competes with the natural beauty that surrounds and supports them. Thomas Jefferson was America's first great champion of wine. He was a statesman, a diplomat, president, and author of the Declaration of Independence. It must take a lot of good wine to write such a great document. In Napa, there is a tribute to him in the form of a scaled replica of the home he built amid the green hills of Virginia, which he called Monticello. It is a remarkable building because Jefferson was a tremendously well-read and traveled man. At the heart of that sacred building tradition was the intention to embody the dimensions of the earth below and the sky above so that we could live in harmony between those two. In comparison to Jefferson's hillsides, Oak Knoll District is remarkable for being capable of growing an amazing variety of high-quality wine grapes. But the building was a simple statement about humanity's place between the earth and the stars, a space we share with grapevines. I think that Jefferson would enjoy seeing his sharp angles and domed roof against the green backdrop of grapevines filled with fruit. Trefethen is a winery that has one foot firmly in the past and another right here in the present and pointed to the future. The central original building was built in the late 1800s under the guidance of Napa's foremost architect and winery engineer during that time. McIntyre had learned to build wineries in the Finger Lake District in upstate New York. So he followed what was considered the state of the art, traditional gravity winemaking designs. This required tremendously strong buildings because the heavy tanks were on the upper floor. So when the wine needed to be transferred to the barrels, they just opened the valves and gravity would move the wine. This is a very efficient method in a time of man-powered pumps. Even today, gravity wineries are very popular and wine pumps are designed to handle the juice as gently as possible so they don't bruise the fruit and destroy the flavors. The Trefethen buildings sit in a beautiful part of the Oak Knoll district, surrounded by 500 acres of vineyards that they have developed and nurtured since the 1970s. They have beautifully restored this architectural gem and it's an important part of their daily operations. After all, for all the enjoyment visitors experience, wine country is a place where people work. The Ceja family's Mexican heritage is evident in the design of their property. The space serves as both a welcome center and event space 
It's also the offices from which they can manage their vineyards and winery. It has a long, rambling structure, and the southern walls shield the interior rooms and courtyards from the bright sun, very much in Mexican style. As you drive down the road, it's easy to miss them. In this place of bigger-than-life buildings, their portrait is done in human dimensions. The colors are earthy, the entrance is intimate, and everything is subdued. I often have to remind my guests that California has been part of Mexico and Spain longer than it's been part of the United States. Thanks to our brilliant sunshine and Mediterranean climate, traditional Mexican architecture fits in beautifully here. This structure started off as a home, so it's designed to suit human needs. The property has numerous hidden corners and courtyards that are ideal for soft-spoken conversations and romantic exchanges. The Seha family winery is a perfect example of one of the reasons that California wine country is such a popular and successful destination. It combines American entrepreneurship with Latin hospitality. Even though their business is selling wine, hospitality, family, and friendship come first. The key to understanding Trouchard is that this place is all about the vineyards. The vines start at the front of the property with a small flat area near the winery and home. Then they climb the rolling hills and spread out, wrapping around the pond. The family history goes back to growing grapes in France. And even though that wasn't this generation's career choice, it's hard to get vines out of the blood. When they came to Napa many years ago, they started in the most traditional way, with vineyards. Over the years, they've expanded them in their particular corner of Los Carneros. Like any good wine country ranch, the home is central to the property. And the winery is just steps from the vines. At that corner where the flat property starts working its way uphill is the entrance to the cave. It descends into the earth. What I like about Trouchard is that it is thoroughly authentic. The story of the wine is right there in the placement of the vines, the house, the winery, and the caves. Each is located in the correct place, fit into the land in the best possible way to produce great wines. That's probably because the property was developed gradually over many years. So they had time to get the feel of the place, to find the best pathways and get a sense of where things fit best. That is a delightful, patient process that is less common these days, as Napa has become a destination and the playground for the wealthy. The way in which wineries are created has changed. Today, teams of architects, landscapers, and consultants arrive and transform a hillside into a vineyard and a winery based upon the new owner's vision and considerable budget. There's nothing wrong with that. It's good to have a vision. But there is something very graceful about having an extended conversation with nature and allowing that to inform your decisions. The result is both practical and beautiful. Visiting the Kellum Vineyards is a real treat. It's an absolute gem sitting right there in the heart of the Napa Valley. It's right off of Zinfandel Lane and has beautiful views of St. Helena to the north and vineyards all the way around. The family that runs it and pours the wine has 
carefully put the place together, a great collection of buildings and architectural details and pieces of art that are designed to please and to make the visitor feel welcome. The view of the place, the feeling, the, the people you meet, it says it all. The Kellum Vineyards in the heart of Napa. Every time I bring clients to Viadere, as we drive up the steep driveway, I wait to hear their voices, their expressions, their maybe a little gasp as we pull close to the property and they look out past the winery, through the trees, to the view beyond. Viadere is perched on the hillsides overlooking the northern Napa Valley, and the views are spectacular. The vineyards are extremely steep, and down below is a beautiful lake that reflects sunlight up onto the vineyards late in the day. The entire place has been designed to show off the beauty of this place. And as we know, beautiful places make beautiful wines. And that truly describes Viadere. The Swanson Winery is like a candy box. Slightly fancy outside, but within filled with wonders for the senses. The location is not spectacular by Napa standards, but it is prized. The rising belly of the valley floor where so many of the famous wines are grown. As you approach the winery, Swanson in many ways is understated. The shaded gate, the simple pretty garden, the abundance of flowers, the elegant but seemingly delicate benches and tables. But when you go inside, the picture changes. 
Some people are like that. When you first meet, they don't impress you. But when you spend a little time with them, you realize that there's so much more inside. That's why you should never rush a wine tasting. Because you need to give the wine some time to open up and reveal itself. The main tasting salon reveals the owner's New Orleans roots, the sense of fun and gaiety, a banquet for the eyes of rich colors and eclectic combinations. Like a true Louisiana salon, it is a cube shaped room with a high illuminated ceiling. The strong use of red is so appropriate because this is Rutherford, where iron deposits are carried into the vineyards from the surrounding hills by the creeks. It is a mineral that Cabernet grapes love to turn into rich masculine flavors. As much as Pinot Noir is a lady's grape, Cabernet's is a man's. But just like Mars will fall Venus, Swanson's big Cabernets fit in beautifully in this delightfully feminine environment. Adding a delicious food pairing fills out the picture perfectly, because wine is ultimately meant to complement other foods, and their interaction releases greater depths of flavor. The statement that the Swanson Winery makes is that beauty and complexity can exist simultaneously.